this week I have mostly been painting. So when you're prepping, which is the complete key to a half decent paint job, this is what you're looking for here, where it's uh, a big area of different colour because that's where you're smoothing it over whereas here <clears throat> you can see the the blue the dark blue is only a small line to the primer and then the the light blue that I put on later so that's going to be a ridge for sure and and that's what you want to avoid so that's going to need some more work there these these feel good and look good so that's kind of the key to it visually Thanks to uh, the baking Arizona sun. Um, this has been out there for about 10 minutes before I brought it in. Um, it's already touched dry. I'm gonna give it another, I don't know, 10 minutes maybe, uh, and then start slotting it into place. Cause again, it's all primer. I'm gonna sand it all down again anyway. Um, so if I chip a few bits off, it's not a real big problem. It's still only primer, but um, I've reassembled, just slotted in place the tank and seat and everything, just to get an idea of what it's going to look like. Obviously the gold isn't primer, but I'm kind of liking that. I don't know about the gold, um, but I thought I'd give it a go, see what I think. Live with it for a bit, and um, obviously there's side panels there that will cover it up if I don't like that idea. Had some goodies arrive today. Quite like how the engine start button's gonna look. Rather sweet. And then these bad boys, which are a little bit too gold for my liking, but they fit really nicely, actually. Um, really nice quality product, honestly. Um, but they are way too bright yellow gold. Um, so what I'm going to do is use these to cover up the, uh, the reservoirs while I find a gold that I'm comfortable with for everything I'm going to paint gold. And I'm looking at a dirty gold. I wanted to, kind of wanted to match this, except that's kind of a coppery colour. And I prefer what we got over here on the Triumph. That's a nicer, just a, a dull gold. That's kind of what I'm after, a dirty, dull gold. So, so I've been buying paint today, neither of which looks the same color as that, but you can never go by the lid, so I thought I'd try them out because the label looks a bit different. So, I'm gonna give them a go, see what they look like. It turns out the lids are actually a good representation of what's in the can, which is worth noting, note to self. Um, so obviously that copper colour is way too coppery, uh, even though it's called, what's it called? Antique gold. Um, we like the dirty gold, which is uh, bright gold. Um, even that could do with a little bit of dirtying up with a, a black matte finish maybe. Uh, a clear lacquer that's got some black in it. And then the idea is that <clears throat> the back is gonna be white because that's the trailing oh, I edge. I thought about kind of fading it in on the tank, the gold from the bottom. Um, reminiscent of my dear 1969 Stingray, which my very good friend Stefano Preetti painted for me. Um, following the, the traditional kind of stingray concept. Also thinking I might go for a satin white rather than a, a high gloss. This is the matte primer, um, enamel primer, but I'm kind of liking the idea of a satin finish. And there's that gold accent on the, um, the original ignition key holder fairing um quite like that as a gold accent might stick with that instead of going the carbon route starting to get 
an idea of what it might look like. Obviously with or without the tailpiece. And actually white is a really good primer to show up little imperfections like these guys here, which I missed. There you go, came into focus just in time. That's just some runs, we'll sand those out. I don't know how I missed that, because that's a cavity. I've identified all the blemishes that need filling, a uh, little hole, tiny little holes there, and a little bit of sanding there. So, that's probably as far as I'm going to take the paint for now because I'm going to need to be throwing the tank and everything into place roughly like I have now to see where the speedo mounts, etc. Um, so don't want to get a finished paint job until I'm ready to start putting it back together again for real. Returning to the front end of the bike. I'm exploring the latest idea of the headlight mount and I just happen to have some hinges that I've cobbled up as a bracket just to see kind of what distance away from the frame it needs to be and already you can see there's an issue because if we've got three of these in line that brake fitting on that lock steering lock is gonna is gonna interfere with the next one along so this is on the upper mount um so let's try it on the bottom mount and see what that looks like given that i didn't like the protrusion the amount of protrusion at the front i rather than taking it all off the top and putting it off the bottom bolt i've just lowered it off that bracket for now um, because that will bring it closer to the frame Anyway, and from this angle, I'm liking that better. Yeah, that's not bad. And now we've got plenty of clearance on the cables uh, because they're way above it. So I think that's the way to go. And whether I actually mount it off that top one or the bottom one rather depends on what I find to mount it with. Funnily enough, I found some brackets with some really nice pre-drilled holes that are actually off a Ford alternator. So when they arrive, we'll see if they do the job or not. So I've taken off the steering lock, this, this butted up to two little bars um, to stop the handlebars turning too much. Um, doesn't make much difference because actually it's all controlled up here as well um, by the actual steering lock but what it does do is give me a mounting position potentially for the headlight mount um, which moves with the forks thus negating all the hassle of these cables getting in the way knocking things and just a general mess another alternative is to actually route them the other way, i.e. around the outside of the handlebars, which I've seen on a couple of the others, they've done that. I don't really like that though, it's kind of messy, but then it depends what I put in the middle there if it isn't the headlights. So we'll see how that all pans out. Now we're getting somewhere, turn it round, um, so obviously all that front stuff gets chopped off. Um, but even with a single mount that might look kind of cool and I can get the three lights in there and the uh, cables don't matter and it turns with the uh, with the fork. As usual I had a complete rethink on the speedo mount and working on the basis of less is more uh, come up with a much nicer cleaner idea for that. But the cunning plan is to use the same piece over here, somehow mount it onto that mount there, and that will be the speedo mount. Yeah, because that'll then fit on those two mounts at least. Maybe I might have to drill a hole. I might have to drill a hole for that one. 
So that's what we'll be looking at next time. Mounting the speedo and a few other things. Removal of the exhaust in preparation for the back end coming off. All kinds of excitement really. So thanks again for watching and do tune in again and subscribe to the channel. Bye.